once you once you get into it and you see that you just get one good photo, it's like, it's oh, perfect. this is. I feel like I'm doing a workout. I'm actually sweating doing this. <laughs> I'm Frederick, and I'm here with my friend John. And today I'm going to teach him how to do street photography in Lisbon. I hope you enjoy it. I need a photo of this guy. Senor, posso tirar un foto? Do you speak English? Yeah. I do. I'm doing a street photography. Okay. I don't know how to do, but I'm practicing. Okay. Thank you. I have prepared three challenges for John. One is to use composition in a creative way in street photography. Two is take a couple of street portraits. And three, do some candid street photography where he doesn't ask permission for the photograph. Stick to the end and let's see how it goes when we debrief about how this photo walk has went. Has went. Gone. Okay, let's get the camera settings straight first. So the idea for setting up the camera settings is to make it uh, as automatic as possible. Then you put a maximum ISO, let's say 3200, and the shutter speed of 1 200th of a second. And this is important. If this isn't set in low light situations, you won't be able to freeze the moment. But we haven't set the aperture. So this is kind of an adjusted aperture priority mode. The only thing that John has to worry about is the aperture which controls the depth of the image. So we're set, let's go. Okay, so for this photograph that John just took his very first street portrait here, I think uh, it was good, but we need to find out how to work the scene. So when you get the acceptance of photographing someone, you can squeeze as much as possible out of the situation itself. You can do one wide, uh, like a wide photograph. You can go close, you can go real close, so it's only a headshot. Mm -hmm. But when you got her acceptance, then it's good to try to do different kinds of photographs in one. Because we don't know what's going to work before we come home and we see how the photographs are. This is fine, thank you. <laughs> thank you. If you have moved over here as well, and maybe you could just see the cat looking at you. Yeah. So when we work a scene, it's, about, it's also about the aperture. So do like one shallow depth of field of 1.4, yeah. one with two, one with up, down, okay. different scenes. But it takes some practice to be that quick on the trigger. Oh. For me, the biggest issue with photography is composition and depth. I never know when to go from 1.4 to 2.8. And I didn't mention this, but John has a YouTube channel with Amelia, who is the one filming this right Hi. now. <laughs> and together they have a travel blog. So John has a lot of experience in videography, but not as much in taking the photos. But he knows how to use a camera. That's yeah, so, start. And I'll be a pro by the end of the day. Yeah, I'm sure. So when I look at the, the focus here, it doesn't look like it's on face tracking. Well, right now we're shooting with single point focus, which means you just follow the, the square on the camera. But I have a bad uh, experience doing face tracking because let's say that I see someone I want to photograph and it takes the, another person's face. Ah. Or maybe her arm is uh, closer to the camera than her face. I want to focus on the cigarette in her hand. Okay. Then it focuses on the face and the cigarette gets burned. Okay. So it's just to get a little more control yourself. Sometimes for studio photography, it's good to have eye tracking because the yeah, eyes yeah. want to be focused. If you know that you're going to do portraits, exactly. you'll use it. Yeah, and sometimes when you see a scene, like this here but let's say you know all the people will be on the right then you kind of preset it to the right take a photo now take a photo now oh you're almost there uh, <laughs> maybe i missed it can you take a photo now remember it's fine have a good day yeah yeah i take it too personal <laughs> i'm john i practice photography is it cool with you that i take a photograph yeah 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 okay so john has gotten some practice shots in so now we're going to find a place to sit down and look at the different types of street photography that he can pick and choose from so we understand his personality and taste so in street photography there's different kinds of style and taste so i thought it would be a good idea to maybe show john uh, some different uh, famous photographers and see what style that he caters to first we have vivian meyer and she does a lot of emotional uh, portraits as you can see here mm -hmm. She's kind of in the face, mm -hmm. very emotional. Literally. Portraits. And then we have Alex Webb. He's known for his uh, color photography, very contrasty, plays a lot with silhouette. Next up we have William Klein, which is my personal photographer. I'll make a video about him soon. <laughs> but he does really close up photography with a wide angle lens. You can see where he mm -hmm. just pushes people. And then, and then very uh, l uh, low aperture. Yes, exactly. And it's almost, it looks like a gallery of photographs that he mm. takes, it's incredible. Next up we have André Kichepasson, who is one of the most famous photographers in the world. And he's known for his composition and kind of being a fly on the wall. So he's the opposite of the people who are up in people's faces. Okay. You can, he's, it's almost like a ghost following people around in the city. Kind of like the first one. Yeah, Vivian Meyer. I think that's my idea of street photography. Something everyone can relate to or immediately 
tell themselves a story. Every photographer will tell you that midday sun is the worst because it creates these harsh, this harsh light and harsh shadows. Right now it's kind of cloudy here, which is perfect for street photography because the clouds are kind of diffusing the light, which makes the skin tones very pleasant to look at. So if it was like blasting sunlight, it would be almost like no go to, to, to shoot? If we had that today, then we could do something like what Alex Webb is doing because he focuses so much about like silhouettes and these harsh shadows that you can almost frame a photograph with. It's a lot more difficult. It looks difficult. Yeah, so it's actually, we, I'm glad you didn't choose him as one of your favorites. Uh, yeah, I did that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do it. Let's see how this goes. In order to do street portraits that works, I think all of it is about the energy that you bring to the person that who you're approaching. Because if you come in like slouching, like, hey, can I, uh, like, mm. if, you, if you have a bad uh, demeanor. But I also it think way. it's a kind of a hit and miss, you know. <laughs> but that's also about it, uh, the selection of the people who you ask, that's half of it. Mm. So someone might say, I can't get any good street ports because the people always say no to me. He might have good energy, he might do everything right, but his selection of the people who he asks mm -hmm. is wrong. Can I take a photo? Yes. Thank you. That was really cool. I am um, who saw it? You did. I got it in my eyes. You should do this instead of me, I imagine. Impressa. Once you once you get into it and you see that you just get one good photo, it's like it's oh, yeah. you get the sh the shiver. But, Ooh, I'm I'm on fire. But also like right now every photo that John is taking is from down here. Yeah. <laughs> so we gotta mix it up a little. We need to buy a Hola. Hola. Oh. Hi. Hey. 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 comida, comida. There is a photographer called Robert Kappa, who is the founder of one of the biggest street photography magazines. His uh, mantra is, if your photos aren't good enough, you aren't close enough. When you wanted to take the photograph of that girl, and I said you should run. What about this girl up here? Oh yeah. She for herself. You need to run, run all the way down. <laughs> That's because otherwise you're sitting there with too much information. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's why I need a zoom. Excuse me? Uh, Fell English? Can I take a photo of you? I'm doing, I'm practicing street photography. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. Just act like I'm not here. Yeah, of course. That's what my master teaches me. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. It's so cool with the red uh, the dumpster in the background. I'm actually sweating doing this. <laughs> you mean you too? <laughs> it's like there's a person there, you know, and you know that he's probably not comfortable, but we're allowed to, and yeah. It's, it's fun, but it's like when I started making videos. <laughs> Can I take a photo of you? I'm practicing street photography. Thank you. Can you smoke? Yeah. Take a yeah. photo. I have an acid quad. Oh, you do? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I have analog too. Yeah. Uh, can I do a portrait? Yes, of course. Yeah. You got a pro in action here. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Oh, hey! <laughs> nice to see you. you! Nice to meet you. It's amazing nice to see you in person. Uh, um, and I love your videos. One thing I'm very jealous of in terms of making these videos is that you get so many real connections and interactions. 100%. And when I get home and I look at the photos, I can remember every single interaction yeah. I've ever had with photos that are five years old. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. So maybe we should switch our yeah. content to... Look at this guy, I'm just gonna... He looks super cool, go ahead. Hola amigo. Posso tirar un foto? Uh, 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 yeah. I'm practicing street photography. <laughs> <laughs> Can I take a photo? 
Why? I'm trying to learn him how to take portraits in the street. How much do you pay? Get a lot of ads out. No? No. Thank you so much. Okay. So I, uh, I'm getting the hang of it, I feel. This is, I feel like I'm doing a workout. It's like <laughs> super taxing on the mind. Okay, so now we've done a lot of street portraits, but I'd also like John to try to do some candid street photography where we don't necessarily ask the people for permission for mm -hmm. the photograph. But the uncomfortable thing is that it's a 50 fixed uh, lens, yep. so you can't zoom. Oh. But why don't you use like a 70 to 200 so you can like just for a different kind of street photography? I have three lenses that I care about and they're all fixed lenses. If you stick to one lens, that's the lens that you're going to learn. If John's going to continue to do street photography and stick into one lens, then he knows his range mm -hmm. and he knows when to get close and when to step back. So that's going to be your comfort zone, you could say. Okay. So that was a candid photo and right when I got a little bit closer he turned around like looking at me I was like that's uncomfortable. Frederick said I have to ca practice candid photo but but I mean of course some of them will say no with their body language. Yes. Like so what do you what do you like do you have to be at a certain distance? What do you want? What do you want? It's, it's not, not that, that simple. simple. <laughs> Amateur tip here, use a, use a zoom lens, it's easier. Okay, so what did you do there? What was the idea? Um, I wanted a more candid photo that was completely natural without the model to be Positive. aware of, of, of what's going on yeah. and I feel that that adds more of a genuine aspect to it. I realize that street photography is also a healthy lesson in interacting with humans. <laughs> and being polite. <laughs> but it's not the easiest thing if you're introvert. I, what about, what would you say Amelia? Yeah. For me this would be very difficult because I'm super shy. So I think in order to approach people, what you do, you're pretty cold. But if it was me, I would be very insecure. The biggest challenge would be for me to go ask people, can I take a photo? And I would care a lot about making them feel good, which might stress me out so I don't focus on camera settings, you know. In terms of composition, what do you know already from doing video? Well, the rule of thirds, mm -hmm. um, but Generally, I haven't really studied rules. No, no. <laughs> it's, for me, it's like what looks good. But because there's a couple of things besides rule of thirds, that's a great one, especially also for beginners. So rule of thirds, and here you guys see an example of how rule of thirds looks, where you place the subject in one of the crosses of the images. Senor, posso tirar un foto? Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't stoked about it, but it's okay. It's okay. Once we get the color grading and <laughs> We're gonna fix it in post. Yeah. <laughs> Another ruling composition is leading lines, and that can be done in many different ways. In this one, you see a lot of staircases going like this, this, and this, zigzag stairs, and so on. And the idea is that you place your subject at the end of the line and the eye kind of follows. I think that one was a misleading line. In a photograph, you can also control how the viewer will look at the image by using leading lines because you're leading the person to the subject. Wow. So some people right now, they're waiting like, let's take... Another rule of composition is called a frame within a frame and it's kind of self-explanatory. Like, you find a photograph and you step one step back. Instead of going up close and making a portrait, you step one step back and you get the whole frame. So you frame it within a frame that's already there. And frame within a frame for... Yeah. So I did just forget. wait here for an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have to study this more to really apply it. Uh, because what I'm trying to do is just to set the mood with the way I frame it, from down and up, and from up down, from the side, how much is in the photo. Do you think that these suggestions are a bit more advanced? Yes, and you're right, in terms of uh, the level, this is a beginner video, and it's almost a hassle to understand how you use the camera and exposure and catching that decisive moment, which mm. street photography is about. 
but I think we should try out just using leading lines as an example for these next 10-15 minutes because they are easy and they're everywhere if you look for them. Okay. So let's try it out. Right now we're on a main street. We need to walk. We need to go away from here. With the main streets, people are busy and usually it's very tourist. So what we're going for is side streets. And the idea is to walk around solely focused on leading lines because if we introduce too many new concepts, it's going to be more confusing than helpful. When I have the compositions in mind, I feel like every photo has to be based on one of these principles, rules of yeah. Pr yeah, principles. And that kind of throws out my create creative approach. Yeah, we thought about like doing sticking a lot more to emotions and now we're talking about composition solely. Yeah. And mixing those two, that is beyond something we're doing you, right now. You it's not for a newbie like me. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna go back home and go through all the photographs, pick the ones that we like. I really enjoyed taking photos for the first time, like really actually trying to, to like do for real. So, yeah. uh, and I think with all your inputs as we went along, I, I got a better grasp of, of why people are into photography. If you should say one thing that was the most difficult part. Uh, it's, it's handling everything at once, interacting with the person, the permission, taking a good photo that makes sense, a composition, what kind of composition do I pick this, in this you know, photo? All of these things combined, yeah. there's a lot of tools that you have to finesse. Oh, but you're so, right, it's the combination of all of it yeah. and you have two seconds. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm kind of proud of some of them I took. I mean, I that you should be. It, it came out better than I expected and better than a lot of people who would have their first tried street photography, 100%. Show us a couple of your favorites. So the first good photo I took today was the old man with a cigarette. He tells uh, a thousand stories. But I like that he looks to the horizon instead of looking down at you as well. Yeah. And then you have the tuk-tuk driver through the windshield. I think there's an interesting story to him. I kind of want to know more about him. You know, he, he looks like a cool guy. And then there was this photo, which I may actually uh, suggested me to take. And this is one of the most genuine photographs that you have taken of all the photographs. We took a little too many street portraits compared to candid photographs, yeah. I think. I actually would like to have this one yeah. framed, yeah. just as a memoir of my street 100%. photography tour with Trovadin. What do you guys say, should we finance it on the YouTube channel? <laughs> Hit that like button. Let me know what you guys think of John's photos and how it went for him as a first timer and how I did as a first teacher. And as you guys know, and I already said that John has his own YouTube channel with Amelia uh, about traveling. So if you're into lifestyle and travel, make sure to check them out and I'll see yeah. you soon.